Welcome back everyone to Data Science for Everyone. Today we're going to be looking at TensorFlow. Let's get started. So the first thing that we want to do is we're just going to go through a very quick introduction to TensorFlow. So first thing that we want to do is go in and import. So let's do, uh, well again, I, I guess if you guys haven't installed it before, you can do pip install TensorFlow. Okay, but we definitely already done that. So let's go on and do import TensorFlow as TF. Um, and then we'll go on and run this, but we'll also go on and do something like TF dot version. Let me go on and print this. And here you can see that we're using uh, version 2.8. Uh, as of right now, this is one of the newest stable releases that we have. Um, now, another thing is that you can use this with um, with uh, GPUs and all that type of stuff. We're not going to go into that at least right now. Um, if there's if there's a desire to talk about that, we can go on and do that. But right now, I'm just going to be using Google Colab uh, to do this so that everyone can kind of have access to it. So let's move on then to go on and get some of the built-in data set. Now, one of the most common ones and one that's preloaded is the Minsk data set. So M-N-I-S-T. And basically this is going to be uh, the numbers, okay, pictures of numbers. So we'll say tf.keras.datasets.minsk uh, here to load it, okay. And then we want to go on and load the data. So we're going to have our X train, our Y train. Uh, then we're going to also have our X test and our Y test here. And this is, uh, we're going to say, uh, minst.load data. Now this is, and as we'll see here in a second, um, let it download real quick and we'll say X Train and we'll show it. Now notice that this is this is an array. Okay, and notice also that it's there's just basically a bunch of zeros and all of this um, type of stuff. Now the thing is, is that we need to actually convert this to um, uh, floating point numbers, okay? Because they're right now they're not actually floating point numbers at all. Um, and again, this is just something that I happen to know about the data. So you can't quite see it here, but you can see it's ints in here. So let's go on then and do that for each of the X test and the X train here. So then that would be X train uh, divided by 255 dot. And then we'll do also um, X test uh, divided by 255. Oh, and then again, we can see here X train run this and now you can see here at least for these if I run scroll down here you'll see it uh, oh, it's not in here right now but you can see that there's this little dot in here this point the decimal in there um, and that's going to tell us again that they are now floating point uh, numbers so that gets us to the basic start of our uh, data here and so let's go on now and uh, start to build up a basic machine learning model so the first thing that we want to do then is by grabbing in uh, and using the uh, sequential. So we'll do our model here is equal to tf.keras.models.sequential. And this takes in a list. Oops. And this is basically going to be, uh, I'm gonna make this a little bit cleaner. And there we go. So we'll do tf.keras.layers.flatten input shape here. And then we know that, and again, if I go up here really quickly and I'll do something like x test.shape, here you can see here that it's 10,000 by 28 by 28. So we'll go through here and say that our shape now is equal to a tuple of 28 by 28. 
Okay, and then we'll go on and add another layer here. Um, whoops. Let me get this cleaned up real quick. And you can get that. There we go. Okay, tf.keras dot layers dot dents. Okay, and then this is going to be 128 activation. Activation in here is going to be the RELU. Uh, and we'll go over a lot of these, what a lot of this means and everything else in subsequent videos. Okay, but what I'd like to do at least right now is just say, oh, here's a basic example and getting everything to work just so that you guys know that you've installed TensorFlow correctly. So let's do tf.keras.layers.dropout 0.2 and then tf.keras.layers.dents 10 uh, and then that should be good. So let's go on and run that. All right, and we see that we got the check mark, so we're good. Now, each model, okay, is going to return either the logits or, uh, and this is for the vectors, okay, or the log odd scores um, for each of the classes. So let's go on and do something like uh, predict. Here is going to be the model of x, x train, um, and we'll do true one, and then we want to send this as a NumPy array. Okay, and then let's take a look at our predictions. Okay, and then here you can see here that they are the log odds uh, in here. So we can also uh, convert these uh, logits to probabilities, okay? And that's gonna be more likely what you're going to want because again, when we're talking about what is actually useful to us and not, again, probabilities are gonna be what we're more or less gonna be wanting. So we can use the softmax, so tf.neuralnetwork or nn.softmax here, and we take our predictions to numpy and run that. And then now we actually have our probabilities, okay? Now we can actually um, change this and actually put this uh, numpy into, uh, into the function. So again, we can put it into like another layer in here if we want to basically quote unquote bake it in. Um, but again, it can be a little bit hectic to do this and I, would, I wouldn't I would recommend using that. So let's just go in and stick with what we have here um, as a general rule. So let's go on then and also define a loss function uh, for training. So let's use um, say our loss is going to be um, tf.keras dot losses all right dot sparse um, we want categorical cross entropy and we'll say from logits is true uh, and so what this is doing okay so we're defining our function all right we're going to be using our uh, sparse categorical cross entropy. And this is going to take this vector here, um, and it's going to turn it into a scalar loss, okay, for each of these. So we'll run this. And then uh, let me, let's go on and run this and then we can have a little bit more of a discussion on this. So we can do model.compile optimizer here, we'll set to atom. Uh, the loss function is our loss, and our metrics in here will be accuracy. Okay, and so basically what we're doing here is, well, if I, maybe if I, maybe it'd be better if I do this. So if, let me go back up here. Add code, and if I do something like loss of y train uh, through one with our predictions dot numpy 
uh, run this first. So notice here that it's taking just this uh, one Y train with the prediction. It's giving out here. Um, basically, it's a negative log probability of the true class. So loss is zero if the model is sure of uh, a correct class. So, so uh, again here, uh, this initial loss for this one is going to be 2.7 or so, give or take. So before we're going to actually train the model, this is going to be our configuration, and we're going to compile our model. Uh, so we are going to set our optimizer to Atom. Again, we're going to set our loss is equal to our loss function. And then, we're, again, we want to have our evaluation metric as our accuracy. So the next part we need to do then is actually fit and train the model. So let's go on and do model.fit. Here, our x train. Our y, whoops, y train, and we'll do five epochs for now. And then we'll need to evaluate our model as well. And uh, we'll again, we'll let this run, and I'll probably speed up the process here because I don't want to waste too much time. So with the model complete, we're going to want to um, actually set up our evaluation. As we said, this is for, so we can do model.evaluate here, and we do our x test, our y test, and we'll say verbose is 2 for here. And then basically, we're going to look and see and check our accuracy in here. So what we see is this accuracy right here is we're about 97, 98% accurate on our data set. Uh, so if we want, let's say, our model to return a nice probability, we can also wrap up uh, the training model with, uh, uh, with the softmax. So let's say a probability model in here will be tf.keras.sequential. Uh, and then here, oops, we'll have our model. And then here is we're wrap, uh, wrapping it up with our softmax. Keras dot layers dot softmax. We can run this and then we can check our probability model in here with our x test of five. Run that, and again here we have our nice uh, probabilities that we have of each each of these. So this is the first uh, basic example that we've done using some pre-built models with Keras. Uh, we're going to really start focusing on basically how you would pass the TensorFlow exam uh, with um, uh, brought to us by Google. Okay, and actually see how. Um, we can actually move along with that type of thing, and maybe we'll try and do this in a hundred days or so. Um, if you guys like this video, please comment, subscribe, and hit that like button, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.